Hey, welcome back to another Type 5 how-to. Today I'm gonna to be taking this sprinkler head here and moving it over just a couple feet and then adjusting it so that it follows my grass line. All right, so if you're interested in how that's done, stick around and I'll take you through it step-by-step step on what you'll need to get this sprinkler head moved and adjusted. To move the sprinkler head, I started by digging out and setting aside the surrounding grass so I could replace it after everything was finished. Then I dug down deep enough to get to the bottom of the sprinkler head to expose the connection to the water line. Unless you know ahead of time, you'll have to do this first in order to identify what size poly tube and connectors you'll need. Sprinkler lines are often laid using 3 quarter or 1 inch poly tubing, but just be aware that that measurement is for the inside diameter of the tube. 3 quarter inch tubing has an outside diameter closer to 7 eighths of an inch, while 1 inch tubing has an outside diameter closer to 1 and 1 eighth of an inch. After identifying that my system used 3 quarter inch tubing, I finished digging the trench to my new location. Make sure that the entire trench is at least a foot deep to match the depth of the previous sprinkler line, and so that you can adjust the height of the sprinkler head in its new location. With the new parts in place, I was finally able to remove the sprinkler head. Even though the water was off, there will likely be a little bit of water left over in the lines. After the water stopped, I removed the hose clamp and old fitting. Keep in mind that these barb fittings are tight and it will take a little bit of force to remove. To make the extension, I connected a 3 quarter inch 90 degree barb fitting to a short section of 3 quarter inch poly tube. Make sure to grab some stainless steel hose clamps as well to tighten up your connections, and don't forget to put on the hose clamps first before you connect the pipe to your fittings. On the opposite end, I used a tubing cutter to cut the tube to length and finished the extension with a 3 quarter inch barb to male threaded adapter and hose clamp before reattaching the sprinkler head. I'll leave a link in the description below to the tools and parts I use for this project, and don't forget to hit that like button if you found this video helpful so far. With the sprinkler in its new location, I can then start to bury the lines. After adding back in a bit of dirt, you'll want to make sure to raise or lower the sprinkler head as needed so that the top of the head sits even with the ground. And since I neatly cut out my grass while digging the trench, I was able to put it all back in place once everything was done. To adjust the sprinkler head, you'll first want to make sure that you're using the correct size nozzle. I like using these Orbit sprinkler heads because they come with a nice pack of interchangeable nozzles. You can select the correct one based on your spray pattern. Nozzle 1 for 90 degrees, 2 for 180, 3 for 270, and size 4 for 360 degrees. I use the provided adjustment tool to loosen the set screw for the nozzle and a small slotted screwdriver to pry out the old one before inserting the new one and tightening it back in place. To adjust the rotation, I spun the top of the head clockwise until it stopped to find the starting edge. There is an arrow indicating the direction of the sprayer, and you'll have to turn the base of the sprinkler to make sure that the starting edge lines up with the right side of your spray pattern. With the right edge lined up, I rotated the head counterclockwise and used the arrow to identify where the spray pattern would end. Using the adjustment tool, you can tighten the rotation screw to increase the rotation or loosen to shorten it. You want to rotate the head completely back to the right every time you make an adjustment to check where the new end point will be before starting the system to make any final adjustments. With the system on, I like to rotate the sprinkler head completely to the right to check the start of my spray pattern. Then I turn it to the left, but not all the way, to check to see where the spray pattern is set to end before it turns back around, and I'll make any adjustments if necessary. Since I'm happy with this spray pattern, the last step is to tighten the set screw on the nozzle until the water starts to fan out slightly. This will shorten the distance of the sprinkler head, but I found that it gives the area much better coverage. Well, that does it for this project. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so I can see you all again on the next one.